welcome. Uh, so, in the last lecture, we have started discussing uh, about an arbitrary finite abelian group and to do Fourier analysis on that. And uh, so, what we have seen is that let G be uh, finite abelian group and we have defined g hat to be the set of all characters on g that is a map from g to c such that gamma of x plus y where plus is the group operation on g is equal to rather we have taken it to the unit circle gamma of x gamma of y this for all x y so what uh, uh, so this is uh, the basic ingredient to do fourier analysis so for example if we have taken zn then we know that uh, this gammas were given as the root nth roots of unity and then we have developed the Fourier analysis and finally got the inversion and the Percival formula for this. So now uh, and we have seen that apart from z n z square uh, z star q is also a finite abelian group uh, which consists of all the unit element of z q and uh, so we can do in general for any arbitrary finite abelian group okay so now let's take uh, define cg to be the set of fun functions on g f a function the set of all function then we know we have seen that uh, C G is a vector space and the dimension of C G is the cardinality of G. This is the number of elements. in the group G. Okay, so, this uh, as just like before you take the evaluation function delta i of x so the basis are very clearly you can write that uh, let x 1 to x n they are the elements in G it is a finite element and you define delta i of x is equal to 1 if x equal to x i 0 otherwise then that is going to give you a basis uh, for C g. So, uh, recall that to do Fourier analysis we had defined uh, an inner product in the space of all functions on j n and in that direction let us just uh, make the notation for inner product let f g belongs to c g then define the inner product exactly as in j n. So, this is equal to 1 over n summation over x varies over g and then this is f x g x bar and another fundamental thing what we do is that f convolution of g of x this is defined to be 1 over n summation over x varies over g and uh, f of x minus of y g of y which is equal to also if I make a change of variable, uh, sorry, here it is y belongs to g, f 
f of y g of x minus of y. This is also because we are taking this as an abelian group, this is this. Okay. So, uh, so, one of the, if we want to have an analogy with what we have done in the, for the two pi periodic function and uh, mm, j n. So, what we would like to have the characters there, they form an orthogonal set that they are mutually orthogonal. So, here we would also like to see that uh, whether uh, that holds in this setting or not. So, now uh, towards that and what we need this lemma. Sub, so, um, now throughout this we will denote gamma 0 to be the trivial character. That means, gamma 0 is a function from g to t which is defined as 1. So, that is the we will call it as the trivial character gamma 0 is always identically equal to 1. Now, suppose gamma belongs to g hat and gamma is not equal to gamma 0, then summation over x varies over g gamma of x this is equal to 0. So, there it was easy because we know exactly what the form of uh, uh, in z n form of the characters are then uh, if you add all the uh, nth roots of unity then we, we can get 0. And in this case, uh, because gamma is not the trivial character, therefore, there exist a x belongs to g or rather x naught belongs to g such that gamma of x naught is not equal to 1. Otherwise, if it is 1 for every x belongs to g, it is going to be the trivial character. So, then gamma of x naught summation over x varies over g gamma of x this becomes x belongs to g gamma of x naught gamma of x. Now, this by our definition is the gamma is a character therefore, this is x plus x naught. Now, if I make a change of variable this again I will uh, be in g, this is over all elements in g gamma of y. So, now this will implies that 1 minus gamma of x naught into summation over x varies over g gamma of x, this is equal to 0. Now, gamma of x naught is not equal to 1, therefore, this will imply that summation over x varies over g gamma of x this is equal to 0. Okay, so, uh, that is uh, that is uh, where, uh, this will be a very useful observation then we get into our orthogonality what we are asking for. let gamma 1, gamma 2 belongs to g hat. The g hat is the dual of g set of all characters of g, then inner product of gamma 1, gamma 2, this is equal to 0. If gamma 1 is not equal to gamma 2, is equal to 1 if 
gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2. So, the proof is easy gamma 1 gamma 2 this is 1 over n summation over x varies over g gamma 1 of x gamma 2 x bar this by definition is 1 over n summation over x varies over g gamma 1 of x and the character gamma 2 bar is the character what we have defined that gamma bar of x equal to gamma x whole bar and we have seen that uh, that is the character for g. So, this is a point wise multiplication therefore, this is x belongs to g this is gamma 1 gamma 2 bar of x. Now, gamma is not equal to gamma 1 is not equal to gamma 2 therefore, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2 bar they are not trivial character. This character is because gamma 1 is not equal to gamma 2. Now, this is going to be 0. Now, if gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2, this is by a previous lemma, gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2, we get that this is x belongs to g mod of gamma 1 of x square and that is nothing but 1 mod gamma. So, n times of that, this is equal to 1. So, they are orthonormal. Now, the question comes that whether in that case, what we have seen is that all these characters, uh, they form an orthonormal basis for uh, the corresponding vector space of functions over j d n. Uh, now, this uh, it is natural to ask that uh, whether all these characters, they are, uh, they will form an orthonormal basis for C g or not. Now, in order to have the uh, basis, so now does is that first we need to check that whether they are linearly independent or not. So, now first of all, how many characters can there be in G uh, for any arbitrary finite abelian group? There we know that in Zn it is exactly n. Uh, now, what about here? So, what we have observed is that you take any x, let x belongs to g and cardinality of g is equal to n, the number of elements, then x to the power n is equal to the identity element in g. Therefore, gamma x to the power n, this is equal to gamma x n which is equal to gamma of E, which is equal to 1. Therefore, they are the, all these characters, they are uh, nth root of unity. Therefore, the number of element in G hat is lesser equal to the number of element in G. We do not know whether they are precisely equal to the number of element in G. So, nevertheless, they are finite in number. So, what we can see about the linear independence. Uh, so, let uh, summation over j, j is some finite set, alpha j uh, gamma j, where gamma j's are zeros, gamma j contained in g hat. Then what we take is that summation over j belongs to some finite set alpha j of gamma j and I take the inner product with some gamma k. Then this is nothing but alpha k by the orthogonality relation. So now, this is 0. So, therefore, each of these alpha k 0 therefore, gamma j is linearly 
independent. Okay, so now one would ask that uh, are they exactly equal to uh, n? In that case, what we know is that if g there are exactly n number of elements in uh, g hat, and we know and we know that they are linearly independent in C g and the dimension of C g is n. Therefore, g hat is going to span and they will be the orthonormal basis for C g. So, this theorem has uh, this result has several proofs. So, we will uh, uh, prove it uh, with basic linear algebra technique. So, let us uh, do for that let v be a finite dimensional inner product space Uh, let us say with dimension dimension d and the inner product is given will denote it by this. Okay. So, you take a linear map, a linear transformation T from V to V is said to be unitary if T V W T V T W is equal to V W. So, this we have studied in uh, our linear algebra course that the spectral theorem for unitary operator says that uh, T is diagonalizable by spectral theorem T is diagonalizable. What does that mean? That is, there exist uh, eigenvector v1 to vd of t such that v is equal to span of v1 to vd. So, we will get uh, a basis element uh, for V consisting of the eigenvectors of uh, T. So, now suppose T 1 and T 2 are two unitary transformation on V. Then obviously, I one can get uh, a basis element consisting of the eigenvectors of T 1 and also one can get basis element consisting of the eigenvector T 2. Now, the natural question is natural question Does there exist a basis V one to V D 
such that v i is r eigenvector for both t 1 and t 2. That in other words is uh, t can t 1 and t 2 be simultaneously diagonalizable. In other words, can T 1 and T 2 be simultaneously diagonalizable. So, that is what we one need to check. So, this is a natural question. So, now let us see what are the condition we would like to impose such that we can get the simultaneous diagonalizable of T 1 and T 2. So, since T 2 is unitary hence diagonalizable there exist uh, v 1 to v d uh, basis such that T 2 of v i is equal to let us say uh, beta i v i, where beta i has the eigenvalues. Okay. So, therefore, I can write V as the direct sum of the subspaces V uh, of let us say beta 1 direct sum of V of B beta D. beta d, where v beta 1 is nothing but the span of v beta i, this is nothing but the span of v i. The v i is the one dimensional uh, subspace of v and because they are the basis element, so therefore, I can have a direct sum decomposition. So, now, let us see the action on of T beta 1, uh, a T 1 on all these subspaces. Now, for if T 1 of V uh, beta i is contained in V beta i, if this is we are assuming that it is if, then you know T 1 is unitary on V beta i for each i to be more specifically T 1 restricted to V beta i, this is unitary on V beta i. Now, if it is unitary on V beta i, therefore, it will be diagonalizable. Now, once it is diagonalizable, there exists w i belongs to v beta i such that t 1 w i is equal to uh, some alpha i omega w i. So, therefore, t 1 of v i this is equal to and by the way this w i is nothing but some r i v i because uh, w i belongs to v beta i which is one dimensional uh, subspace. So, this is equal to t 1 
of uh, 1 by r i w i which is nothing but 1 by r i you take it out t 1 of w i which is equal to uh, 1 by r i alpha i w i and uh, we know that uh, mm, uh, this is equal to alpha i v i. So, now v i is also an eigen value a uh, eigen vector 41 v i is an eigen vector 41. So, so obviously, they have the common eigen uh, eigen values if uh, if this condition holds. Now, when does this condition hold? Now, if I want to show that v beta i are invariant under T 1, uh, then I need to show that I take any element v on v beta i to prove star we need to show if v belongs to v beta i then t v t 1 of v also belongs to v beta i that means it is going to be an eigen vector for t 2 then t 2 must be equal to some beta i t 1 of v if we can show that then star will be true. Now, now let us add t 2 of t 1 of v. Now, suppose if we have a condition if we put here that t 1 and t 2 commute with each other then this I can pull it out t 1 t 2 of v. Now, this is nothing but beta i of some beta of v because v is an eigenvector. So, this is so then t 1 v is an eigenvector. So, therefore, it suggests that they if T 1 and T 2 are two unitary operators on V and so hence what we get T 1 T 2 unitary on an inner product space V and if T 1 T 2 is equal to T 2 T 1 then T 1 and T 2 are simultaneously diagonalizable this suggests to ask that what about if i have a n tuple of unitary operator uh, on uh, v on an inner product space v then if they commute with each other then can they be simultaneously diagonalizable. So, in fact that is going to be true and in the next lecture we will see the proof, the proof will be by induction. Thank you.